Welcome back to this tutorial on uh, Carthaginian Veterans 28mm gripping beast. And uh, before the break, we um, prepped the figure and uh, we got some metals on. And uh, we're just about to move on to the uh, next colour. And uh, the next thing I'm going to paint is the next sort of largest area on the figure. And if we just have a look at uh, our model for the evening, um, we can see that it's going to be the tunic. Um, that's next. Um, not particularly uh, historically correct, but what I do with my units of uh, of figures um, for the Carthaginians is I will um, paint the tunic colours um, different on each particular unit. Um, so the unit you saw at the start of the video um, was white, and this unit is is going to be red. Um, I've done two bases of that, this already finished off it does make them look a little bit roman um but when i go for i think i'm going to look for about 10 of these units so um the, the one red amongst all the other colors isn't going to stand out dramatically and look uh horrifically roman but when you've got two um it does stand out a little bit so let's go on to red um so for base color for red I use this. Uh, another game colour from Vallejo. And um, this is called Heavy Red. Uh, 72141. Um, you can have quite a lot of problems with reds. Um, just give it a quick shake. Um, especially with coverage. And again, when we were talking earlier on about this modern insistency on thinning your paints, thinning your paints, thinning your paints. If you're trying to get coverage and you're trying to get stuff done, what's the point in thinning your paints? I want a red tunic uh, and I want the base to be dark red. So I don't want to thin it, I just want to cover it. So that's what I'm doing with this. And I found that this um, heavy red game um, extra opaque uh, is is very good at giving a coverage. Um, some red paints are quite thin. Very difficult to cover especially over black so you need to do a little bit of research to get one that will cover and um, this is the one brush wise uh, i'm actually going to use a proper brush this time uh, after the uh, the dog chewed versions that i've used for the previous ones and these are my go-to brushes um, a lot of people rave about windsor and newton series sevens and etc um 13 quid a pop i think are the cheapest you can get for winds and newton sevens um made in that london down there well this is my top pro tip for you guys out there uh pro art pro lean um made in skipton in yorkshire so the proper brush is made by proper folk uh not those not those southerners like and um these are about three or four quid a pop and um i've had I've had um, sable brushes in the past and they don't last very long, I don't think. Uh, and these proline brushes are absolutely superb. So that's what I use. Uh, I'm not any on any commission, but uh, I recommend these. So let's get painting. Um, the reason I've gone for a proper brush this time is because I'm actually going to, after all that messy stuff that we've just done with the, the, the metals, I'm actually bothered for once. Um, about where my paints are going on this um, we've seen on the the stuff that we've been doing earlier on we've been slapping it all over this is the first time that we're actually thinking about trying to not go over onto anything else because the stuff that we're painting around at the moment the uh, the chain mail shirt is done and the bronze greaves below it are done so I don't want to be painting those red so I've gone like I say for my nice brush and um, good heavy coverage you can see with this this red paint is painting the area I want to completely red no um, shine through of the black below and this is giving us a really really nice base on which to um, put a highlight colour so there we go 
So I'll just get him back into the light. And I do apologise, I've had a bit of problems with focusing on that. It's, um, that does look a lot brighter than it actually is in, in real life. It's quite a dark red, actually. Um, but there we go, that's um, the red done on this chap. Um, blocked in his tunic. Uh, and then I'm going to come back in a second and do the highlight. Okay, so that's the, the basic red done on the coat. As I say, we were looking for a very opaque uh, coverage on that red um, to make sure that everything is covered and we've got a, a red base. So then my next layer, my mid-tone for um, red is this Vallejo Flat Red from the model colour range 70957. Um, and this is that this particular paint is a little bit translucent. So if you did this as a um, base coat, you would get quite a lot of black coming through it, and you'd probably have to put two or three layers on it to uh, to make it work properly. Um, but um, for a second coat or a mid tone, or in this particular case, this is, this will be a highlight because I found with this. If you put it on right, it looks quite a sharp contrast at the moment as it's going on. But as it dries, it tends to um, dry darker or more vibrant, if you like, um, where the initial brush stroke is. So all I'm doing with this is I'm just picking out the top of the... Um, folds of cloth just to give an indi indication of um, depth on the tunic that you could get with 12 hours of blending. Uh, there is a relative degree of skill to this you just need to be able to pick out the high areas um, and you just get used to what looks best over time um, to make it look decent so there we go there's our lad there's his tunic highlighted um, it looks very bright on this but um, as the this particular red dries, as I say, it does tend to have a bit of a blending effect as it dries. Um, and you'll see when the unit is finished um, how that works. So once again, I'm going to go off and do the red on the rest of the figures. And we'll be back shortly. So that's the red done on all the figures. Uh, just before we move on, um, I tend to or usually do three, um, three colours. Um, like the old foundry triads, if you like, um, base coat, mid-tone and highlight. Uh, with the red, um, uh, I'm just happy with them as they are. Um, I think uh, certainly in the flesh, if you like, those just two colours of red work really, really well together. Um, if I'm looking to get a bit posh, if I'm doing a command stand or something, then I'll use this... Um, 70910 orange red um, and I mix that in 50-50 with the um, red that we looked at earlier on just to do a, a, a top highlight over the what we just talked about. It does deaden the red a less, little less, a um, little bit sorry, uh, but it does make it look worn whereas this red is very quite vibrant. Um, Something I discussed, um, we'll talk a little bit about now, when uh, I had a, an interview with a guy, Winston A.B. Reese, uh, and on his uh, YouTube channel. We talked for an hour, hour and a half about various things, and one of the tips that I gave when I was talking about ideas for new gamers is um, some people get an obsession about getting a figure 100% right, um, and I don't do that. Um, those of you who look to the blog will see that I've got some pretty large collections and you don't have those collections by getting fixated on getting one figure exactly right. You get collections of that size by getting five or six hundred figures pretty damn good 
to the best of your ability, but maybe with a few mistakes on. So if you look closely at my stuff, you, or, you know, zoom in on the photos, you'll see mistakes. Um, but I, I very, very rarely go back and, and fix stuff on a figure unless it's blindingly obvious that um, it's gone wrong. So I guess I could do another layer on this red. Would it make a lot of difference to me? Nah, not really. Uh, and I paint until I'm happy with the standard. Uh, and that's a reasonable standard, I think. It's not shabby. Um, if I wanted to go on and do more and more and um, paint one figure to a fantastic standard, then I'm sure I could. I'd probably just get bored of it, to be honest. Um, but that's that's my philosophy, if you like, when it comes to painting. So the red's done. Um, next up, um, I'm going to do um, the boots. And um, for this, again, I don't need a good paintbrush because I'm just going to be... Uh, slapping it on. I do apologise. I'm just looking for. Uh, there she is. Paintbrush I'm going to use for this particular colour. So, um, Panzer Aces, Vallejo again, leather belt, 312. This is quite a dark brown. Um, not very vibrant, quite dull, um, but I quite like it for. Uh, shoes. I don't actually use it for leather belts, would you believe? Um, but another brush I'm using on this. This is another buggered smaller brush. This is one of my very old Pro Art um, Zeros. Um, I don't even think this is a Pro line. Can't remember what this is. It's different because of the fat um, wooden base on it, but. Seen better days, so I'm just going to use this um, to colour the sandals, shoe sandals, on the base of the figure. And again, you can see that I've painted off the base, but that base is going to be covered with filler and paint when it comes to being based so really not bothered about that so um i'll quickly do the boots on everyone else and then we'll be back with a proper brush to do some detailish stuff in a second okay we're back with um, those shoes done and the next color i'm going to use is um one of my go-to paints really this one um flat earth uh, 70983 and that's not a um a belief in a non uh, spherical home planet it's the name of the paint and i love this color it is a very warm brown um not nice in the previous one um and i use this uh, particular color um with a with a heavy light on it now it looks like an orangey brown and um i use this for a lot of stuff um we're going back to our proper posh pro line brush for this next bit and i'm going to use this brown for quite a lot of stuff on here so i'm going to use it as a base for um flesh so there's a tiny bit of flesh on the top of the legs there, just um, above the greave and below the tunic. Um, and then we've got flesh on the lower arms. And again, I'm actually trying to paint within the lines here which is a bit unusual for me um, I'm quite a sloppy painter really when I think about it when I look at some people um, but then as I mentioned earlier on I'm trying to get big armies done to a decent standard in a, in a decent time so there's a bit of facial hair on there Mustache and, and uh, goatee type beard, um, but um, they'll do brown for now because uh, we're going to put 
two layers over the top of there. Um, but I'm going to use this same brown for the sword scabbard. Uh, my apologies again with the, the focusing on this phone. It's um, one of the most technologically advanced phones and the camera on it is absolutely superb for certain things. Um, long distance being one of them. Uh, times 100 zoom is rather good. Um, but I would have preferred something that would focus on something in front of the camera rather than that. Uh, so, uh, while I've been moaning about Samsung, uh, I've just been painting in a tiny, tiny bit of detail here. I'm just blocking in the uh, the belt. So we're done there with that. And then I'll do the highlights uh, on that in a minute um, after I've uh, painted all the other stuff. So back shortly. So that's the brown done on all those figures and um, just a little note there um, I've done the skin base tone as flat earth um, because we're looking at northern African troops mostly um, so kind of a Mediterranean skin tone rather than uh, a lighter European flesh tone so I've just given them a slightly darker base than I normally would do um, and um, just for your reference, for European tone, skin tone, beige brown, um, 70875, um, that's what I would use for a base on uh, European skin tone. Um, so back to the uh, troops themselves, and we've got all the browns on now. Um, we've got the uh, leather belts uh, done. Um, and the scabbard and the skin. So I'm just going to um, put a very, very basic highlight on the leather. So initially going back to a uh, mini fluff brush and colour I'm going to use desert yellow. You know, quite an old one here as you can see, 70977. Oh, bless me, dropped it. And um, I'm just going to put some of this out next to it's uh, on its way out let's bless it there we go next to the brown um, that we've used on there because what I'm going to do is um, brush is a bit wet just gonna mix in 50-50 And then just use that colour as a dry brush, a bit too dark, on the oh, thing. Um, oh, miles too much there. Um, just as a bit of a dry brush on the scabbard and on the shoes. So scabbard comes out really nicely as you can see and I've made a massive mess of that shoe um, never mind uh, we'll do a bit of coverage up on there later on and then for the rest of the leather belts I'm going to go back to my posh brush and then just add a little bit of highlight on the raised areas of the of the belt just on the top of the shoulder and the the back and the the front of the chest and uh, again on the front of the stomach and that's um highlighted that so all we've got to do now on this is the flash so we'll be back shortly to finish these figures off uh, in part three